All right, welcome back as we delve into the rising inflation in the country and what the households and the small businesses can do to actually survive. Now, one year into the declared state of emergency on food insecurity in Nigeria, the situation has felt more like a descent into a rabbit hole. Businesses are hemorrhaging profits due to macroeconomic challenges, while the hardships faced by households show no signs of easing. To discuss these issues further, I'm joined by Dr. Femi Egbeshola, President of the Association of Small Business Owners of Nigeria, Asburn. Good morning to you, Dr. Egbeshola. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Good morning, and thank you for having me. All right. Uh, it is alarming that the headline inflation um, accelerated to 17 straight months of high. Right now, we are faced with about 33.95%. First off, let me just get your reaction concerning the figure in as much as uh, the federal government seems to believe that uh, the country is almost uh, doing well since uh, we had like um, a decline month on month. Well, um, this is the first time in the history of Nigeria that we're having this rise in inflation. And um, of course, it has affected every fabric of the economy. Yes, there is a, a certain period this time of peace inflation whereby we have some stability, but we expected much more than that. We expect um, the kind of uh, stability that will begin to reflect on the average Nigerians, that will begin to reflect on our businesses and the business environment, that will begin to reflect larger on um, the, the economy of the country itself. So uh, for us, um, government really need to begin to work harder to stem the side of this uh, inflation, to work harder to bring it down uh, as much as possible. Yes, we understand that it is a global issue. Inflation is a global issue this time, but quite a number of other nations are working hard to stabilize it, which we have not been able to see in mm -hmm. our climate here. All right, let's specifically talk about the home front now because practically everyone is feeling the bite, even if you're not into business, even if you're just consuming for household uh, demands now food inflation uh accounts uh, or search to a record high of 40.66 percent and it's been a year since the federal government's declared uh, you know a state of emergency on the food uh, uh, insecurity that we have in the country what do we uh, do to stem this tide in the board because nigerians practically cannot even afford staples to it uh, well, at immediate, um, governments particularly need to do more to um, incentivize that sector, the agri sector. Uh, food is uh, one, one thing that cut across everybody. We all need it. It's uh, a basic need. So government needs to begin to look at how to invest more in agriculture across the board. And they're talking about investing more in agriculture. They need to begin to also look at policies that will, that will encourage agricultural growth in our economy. If uh, a state of emergency has been declared in the food sector, and we are not seeing meaningful changes or um, uh, maximum output from that sector, it means that there is something really wrong with our policy, and there is need for you, of course, to begin to look at it again, to have a robust discussion about the way to go about it. Yes, uh, we should also understand that uh, some of these policies uh, may not uh, have their expected result in the short term. But even as on that, uh, you will discover that in other climes, there are certain situations that are done immediately to arrest the, the, the uh, food inflation such that it would not um, uh, undermine the well-being and the growth of uh, an average citizen. So um, for me, I would recommend that uh, there is need for government to engage more of the farmers and um, uh, farmers in all, all, all across board in the agricultural sector and begin to look at how to also um, uh, encourage others to also go into farming. A food sufficiency is a must in a country. Uh, now that our borders has been opened up for us to begin to bring in some food items like grain, like um, rice and all of that, is a good idea, but it's for short term. We need to begin to work on long-term solutions, particularly on the food sector, so that Nigerians will be uh, living at least an average uh, life and be able to have the strength to do other responsibilities that is expected of them. All right. A hungry man, they say, is an angry man. You have uh, you know, just uh, 
talked about her sustenance farm in Nigeria and should go into farming. Okay, for those of us uh, who stay on the in the rural areas or the, I mean, sorry, the urban areas and the suburbia, what would you really advise right now? Some people they uh, tend to you know eat once a day, but I just want to get um, some sort of coping mechanisms you would um, you know give for the households aside from uh, really getting into uh, cropping or food production per se. Yeah, well, for us, also, uh, the first thing is to begin to cut down every form of expenditure. And that's why, you, like we did mention, some have cut down their, their eating habit from three times a day to perhaps two times a day. I don't think oh, once a day is sustainable, particularly for the young, younger ones. Yeah. Uh, that has been done. Uh, they, there's also need to begin to cut down other expenses. We, uh, we live in a, 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 in a country where we have a lot of social norms. One of it is... Uh, uh, parties and all of that. There's need for us to begin to look at how to cut down on some of the social activities that is taking away some of our fund. Uh, some uh, households also have decided to adopt um, uh, financial services that are able to cut down the expenses. One of it is uh, migrating from the, low, the regular commercial banks to some of these fintechs that do not charge for, for many of the transactions they do online. And that's another way to, 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 to cut costs. Uh, at the same time, too, uh, quite a number of, of us also choosing to go to the bigger markets to get their food and other groceries at a cheaper price than they stay around the corner where some of these things are very expensive. We also have a situation now that um, uh, the, the younger ones at home are now made to work. We have some families whereby they have graduates, two, three of them, uh, school leavers, two, three of them, that are still at home doing nothing, and the parents keep feeding them. Now they are being pushed out to go and do one thing or the other until they, they become gainfully employed so that they can also contribute to the economy of the, of the household. We also have the situation whereby uh, priority lists are being made. Formerly, we do things uh, on emotions or as poor. Now priority lists needs to be made at home of what to do where to spend money on, what to delay, and perhaps what to cancel. These are some of the strategies that are being used now. Then again, to every family has seen need to also diversify. So if a family, uh, are those that are dependent on salary, they have now seen need to diversify to other uh, side or zone to bring in some coins that can support uh, what their hands are at home. Mm. All right, Dr. Um, Egbeshola, you uh, represent um, the um, Association of um, Small Business Owners in Nigeria. At the time when uh, core inflation has peaked to about 27.04%, uh, uh, with uh, specifically uh, transportation uh, cost, uh, inflation rather, rising to about 25.62%, how um, has the operations or how have operations really been for small business owners in terms of rising transportation costs and the increase in electricity tariffs it's it's been really really bad and that's why the recent um, uh, data from the nigerian bureau of statistics shows that uh, over two million businesses have closed in the past two years and that is an, an indication that things are really really bad we have avalanche of, uh, of challenges back to back as we recover from uh, the COVID pandemic. We had the issue of the Naira, uh, then they changed the Naira form down to the issue of uh, a subsidy removal, down to ele ele electricity tariff issue, floating of the Naira, coming down to uh, ele a removal of the subsidy on, ele on, um, on all the other other, other, other uh, areas that governments used to support MSMEs, including. Um, uh, multiplication and uh, of different taxes that we have so it's been it, it's been very very tough and then um, quite a number of us have decided to, to leave business to do other things some are going as low as uh, becoming okada riders marua riders mm. some have decided to sell their properties and leave the country to other climb where they feel they would fare better and then um, some that has also been very discouraging for startups uh, quite a number of startups now are discouraged and new Newer ones and younger ones are, are afraid of coming into, into, into business. And that's why you say that statistics show that, particularly here in Nigeria, most businesses do not survive beyond five years. But then, as well as that, uh, some of us who are still in business have decided to adopt um, some, of, uh, some form of, uh, of innovation that can help us to remain afloat in business. But well, some of these uh, innovation that we have adopted is to begin to look at how we can reduce costs, how we can reduce costs. Cost on our side by making sure that uh, 
we now begin to look for most of our raw materials locally instead of depending on uh, uh, import, uh, imported inputs that is uh, very expensive now. We also like, like look at how we can begin to package our product in smaller sizes mm. that can be affordable to the member of the public because they cannot buy bigger sizes. We look at how to develop different me marketing mechanisms that can support uh, sales. Uh, one of such is now selling on buy now, pay later, or perhaps uh, one day delivery. If you make an order, we deliver it to your doorstep one same day rather than the three or four days that was uh, the previous norm. We also look at how we can begin to look at our staff strengths, who are productive among our staff, who are not, and those who are not, we see how we can um, trim them off. And those who are collecting too much money, even though a minimum wage has been discussed, we are slashing salary. That that's the reality to uh, keep us afloat. We're also looking at other sources of funding because going to commercial banks now to get uh, funding is not just difficult, but too expensive. It is too expensive. Yes, we have a lot of financial institutions in Nigeria where access to finance still becomes a major issue. We're also looking at exports. We begin to see how we can take our products and services out of the country so that we can end foreign exchange. Because of the inflation and the weakness of the Naira at the moment, it makes our products and services very cheap and competitive in the global market. Mm. We see how to, to, to explore that area, <clears throat> to uh, sell our product to the global market and end foreign exchange which is also better for us. We also see how we can collaborate with other uh, stakeholders in the same community that we practice our business. For example, um, quite a number of manufacturers do not manufacture again. They contract the manufacturing to other companies to do for them. So if I'm manufacturing soap, for example, and I have another company somewhere else doing soap, I just give them my ingredients, my, my formula they do for me in my name and my brand, and I sell instead of running a whole factory again and engaging all the, the cost and logistics and all of that. And when it comes to transportation, we see how to cut down transportation by doing a supply based on demand. Before mm -hmm. now, we do uh, all round trip marketing, put our goods on vehicle, move from market to market, looking for what to buy. That has stopped. We only supply on demand now. And that has also helped us to bring down our costs. We also try to see how we can embrace technology in a large way to, to, to support our business. Technology in terms of software that helps us to do our accounting system and all of that so that we don't really need to employ more staff. We also link technology in the way we market our products, particularly now on the social platform and other bigger platforms, even outside the country. We also see how we can engage in um, trade exhibitions that uh, exposes uh, our market to a larger market, our product to a larger market. Some of these trade platforms are online trade exhibition platforms, meaning that our products now are visible globally to everybody that may need it. We also look at how to reduce costs when it comes to energy. So many of us now, uh, we try to look for alternative sources of energy. Those who are not into major production, go for solar energy to provide some form of electricity mm -hmm. rather than relying on diesel for powering generator and all of that. All right, fine. That's um, all, all well said now. But uh, still looking at all of that, one of um, uh, the complaints um, I've um, had to um, get from um, small business owners is that of um, taxation and multiplicity of taxation. The Presidential Committee on Tax Reforms um, uh, I I made some findings not too long ago, and it, was, uh, it talked about uh, reduction of uh, taxes. How, uh, in your opinion, would that really go? How far would that really go in actually stemming the tides? Yes, one best way to support the growth of uh, MSMEs is to reduce taxes and then harmonize them and also have one portal, one common portal for payment of taxes that will reduce the human interference. And that's one of the, 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 the recommendations of that tax committee. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, um, we've not begun to see the dividends of that recommendation. Uh, when it was done, it was with timelines. And what some of the timelines was that uh, we we'll see the immediate implementation of those recommendations in three months, another set in six months, another set in nine months. That uh, committee has been on now for almost a year, and we have not begun to see some of these things happening. Rather than that, what we are seeing is more taxes coming up, more fiscal taxes, more uh, taxes on uh, imports, more taxes on all of that coming up. That is compounding the already existing problem that we have when it comes to taxation. For us, it will be a prayer hard if today government decide to harmonize taxes, government decide to uh, have one portal for us to pay our taxes and reduce the number of taxes, particularly for startups and SMEs. 
Okay, now for the small business owner who is actually thinking of uh, throwing in the towel in the wake of um, all of um, the macroeconomic challenges that uh, Nigerians and, of course, businesses have been suffering in the past one year, what would you really advise them to do knowing that uh, things are really not uh, the best um, right now in the country? Well, my advice is that um, they should become more innovative, see how they can think out of the box to survive. Uh, it is our belief that this challenge will not be there forever. It will not be there forever. And because of the fact that some of the businesses have already closed shop, it gives those of us who are in the business more, 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 more ability to compete better. So uh, uh, that for, for us to now have a bigger space, it means that if you do it well, you can survive. When it comes to uh, getting support, one best way to get support as business owners now is to join hands together to work as one. One best way to work together as one is to join business membership organizations that will continue to build your capacity, give you the needed mentoring and support that you need. Uh, for us, some of us don't go to the commercial banks again. We have cooperative societies that fund our activities at very, very minimal interest rates. That is possible for us to work with. We also have other international organizations, particularly non-governmental organizations, that are supporting startups and I mean, MSMEs now. So MSMEs should be looking out for information that are already in the social space, of opportunities that are around them that they can tap into and grow. We have also grant opportunities that abound everywhere, but it is only for, for you to know it if you have the information. And even when you have the information, it is for you to be positioned mm -hmm. to take advantage of those information. So uh, for me, by and large, it's a time that will come and go, and by the time it goes, we will be the one to enjoy it. Whether we like it or not, we can only grow this economy if we grow the real sector. We are in the real sector. Mm. We are the, the pride or in the high of everybody, including government and international organizations. So we must stay put to grow our economy together. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Femi Egbeshala, for your time and all the useful insights that you have provided on the show for today. Thank you, too. It's my pleasure. All right, that's the size of the show for today. We must say a very big thank you to you for uh, hanging in there to watch the show. Business Insights return same time on the screen. Bye for now.